it's a simple uh, lesson, is when you go about it, you should go to places where you feel uncomfortable to go. And you should start to do things what you feel uncomfortable to do. If you do that, then you will make a difference. So that's very key. I learned a lot about it and I'm still living on that. He said, if I do that, then I make a difference, otherwise I'm not changing anything. But you also have to invest financially. So we invested heavily in the development of people. And what's important in this whole journey is that you as a leader make choices. Sometimes you make the wrong choice and you go into the wrong path, but hopefully you see a time and you make the right turn or a left turn, whatever is needed, and you make the right choice. It's you who make those choices and you will see that your people will follow you. But go in the uncomfortable part. Now, and I think it's essential when you develop new technology, at every stage, at every scale up, we learn and we improve. So it helps to reduce the unit capital cost, it allowed faster, faster processing and also we are capable of uh, producing more uh, products. The project was built um, in a relatively short, uh, short period and that, that, that's what I find always amazing. People ask to me, how can you manage a site with 52,000 people? And then I say, but I started off with, uh, with 10 people. Yeah, and, and then I went on a journey of 8 years. And when we got to the site, we had a few hundred people who were preparing the site. But what is amazing that in, from a few hundred people, within two years, we went to a peak of 52,000. But I started with them, then go, 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 and you go on the journey with them, and you adapt, and you learn, and you fall, and in the end you're capable of managing a very complex uh, site, where I always said to myself and also to my folks, I said, in the end, it doesn't matter how big the project is, it's just a cumulative, it's, it's many little jobs. Now, you don't do that by just, okay, let's go and have uh, 52,000 people going by us. In the preparation phase, and that's a big lesson for me also, we modeled that all. We modeled the whole thing to understand how does the traffic flow, what do we need to do with gates, roads, traffic lights, learn stands on site, stack working patterns, etc. Just by investing in, uh, in modeling. First, in the end, we realized an intercepted flow of those people. And it was quite impressive. I often went outside to look when that moment was there uh, to see how, how they would uh, line up and how the buses would go and, and, and how within a short time people could go back to the lunch stand or the lunch place and have a rest and come back to work uh, uh, afterwards. Also, as you can imagine, this was normally on site, you have to, have to bring the goods from all parts of the world. Now this again was a big number, it was 2 million tons of goods. Now what we did there, again the same thing, we modeled it to understand how do you bring it there. And one of the things that we, that we assessed, because we didn't want to make a mistake, is that okay, if you transport this stuff and you let it run like you normally would do, many of those goods would come over road either through the harbors of Doha or even through Saudi uh, and, and further uh, by, by road. We calculated just the kilometers by bringing those, those goods over traditionally over these roads and we assessed that we would kill eight people in just doing that. Trucks through villages, towns, accidents, etc. You could just calculate statistically eight people said it's not going to happen. So we decided to invest to bring it over water, build a big cave to receive the goods. So I think What's important as a lesson here is that you need to invest in good preparation, you know that, but model it. Model the project operations when you have something which is complex. I know it costs money, but it helps you understand what needs to happen. Now, what's important is that taking care of people is not just addressing the construction hazards. So just looking after people, the equitation, the personal safety of people. It's important, it saves lives, but that's not only what it's about. It's also about really addressing the well-being and the health of your workforce. And one little story there is that there was a guy who went out, a uh, senior manager who uh, visited us who went out, and he came back to me when he had visited the site. And I think it was my fourth year when I was out in Qatar. And he said, I will tell you only one thing. When I woke up here, 
your side, and I walk up to, side, to people in many sides in the Middle East, but on your side here, the guy out of India or Pakistan will face me and wants to have a conversation, and in the other places they will hide and they are afraid, afraid of, uh, of the manager who is coming. So that was a great example of that he warned to me that said, this is, this is okay. What is essential, for, for, uh, in, in my view, for a, a, pro, a true leader in projects is that he deeply feels that accountability. Of course, for the safety and well-being of, of your people, that's first of all, but also for the performance and outcome of the project. Sounds all very <coughs> interesting, but what happens often is that people come forward with excuses when things are not going. The mentality has to be that the buck stops with me. So no, behind, no hiding behind other stakeholders, no behind, hiding behind bad context, the contracts that you had created. And I think in big organizations, that's where I was coming from, um, no hiding between, behind dispersed accountabilities in complex corporate structures, which we have many, many of us faces. Just very clear, you're accountable for that project. And you are, the, you are the person where the buck uh, stops. Now, to having, in having that personal accountability and really make it happen, what's important that you create the capacity to deal with that. I always said to myself and also to, uh, to my staff, you know, you need to be able always to deal with the unexpected. And you need to have capacity to keep on looking ahead and not just be, be uh, overwhelmed by the current issues. So, again, to use the word buck, in Dutch we say the bucket should not flow over. <coughs> so that's key there. And you can do that when you build a strong team around you. It's very simple. And the same day you have to have that they have the time to do it and look ahead and be ready for the unexpected. When you're acting in projects, you need to be very decisive. Often you lack all the information. I'm an engineer, I like to have it all, well, analyze it to death and then take a decision. But you don't have time. People are waiting for your decision, even if it's a bad one. They will tell you, and then, okay, you have to grab. But you have to take a decision on the spot. <coughs> What's important in there is that you be courageous in doing so. <coughs> when you're in the project, and also when you're in a leading job, as I have Michelle looking after all projects, Michelle and my team in my last role, is that you need to keep on looking outside. Keep learning. Learn from the best. What's important there is that you're very curious and not full of yourself. On one side, competitive intelligence, yes, so that you know who is the best. But most importantly, look outside <coughs> your own industry. Because all the benchmarking that we typically did also in the other guest industry was looking at the other big guys. And the guys who are really innovating are the smaller companies. And often in a totally different industry where you can learn from. Now, and finally, I think it's the last point here, um, is stay outcome focused. A project is, is nice because you know there is an end goal. It's not that. So you need to stay outcome focused and be driven uh, by it because that, in the end, is what counts.